Hey guys, it's Noah here with Custom RC Mods. Welcome back to a new video. Now in today's episode, I've got the Strix Nano Goblin. Uh, this was given to me by BS Projects Inc. over on the forums. Thank you so much. If you guys want to see um, all the other stuff he gave me, there's an unboxing video linked in the description below. Um, and yeah, you can check that out. I imagine a lot of you guys are coming from that video uh, to here as I am uploading it right afterwards. But anyway, um, we got basically, uh, we're left with this uh, Nano Goblin that's a pretty good airframe. We've got all the stuff to make it fly. Um, and I'm really excited to get this thing going because I've always had my eyes on this thing and now to finally get the opportunity to own one is going to be really, really exciting. So yeah, uh, basically this thing does need some work so let's just go through the little you know, problem areas that we need to address today. Um, first things first, there is a little bit of foam work needed. Um, right here on the leading edge, kind of by the body, uh, there's a little bit of a tear. Um, then also there's like a one inch tear on the inside of the left elevon. Looks like the right elevon hinge is okay for the moment. However, I'm probably going to you know, reinforce them both with some tape just to play it safe. Um, never really hurts. Um, there's also a little bit right here on the back by the vertical stabilizer. Um, looks like this entire vertical stabilizer section could use a little bit of reinforcement. So I'll see what I can do there um, to keep that all good to go. The nose needs a little bit of work, but it's not too bad. Um, and other than that, I think just it's, it's in really good condition um, in terms of the body there. The final thing we need to do is for the hatch right here as well. As you can see, kind of split open right at the NAC duct. So it's important that we go ahead and address that as well. But that's all going to be handled pretty much with hot glue. I think I've tried foam safe CA, but I think the hot glue is a little bit more flexible. But anyway, we also have a little bit of electrical work to do um, in here. As you might be able to see, I do have a torn uh, lead right here for the servo. So I need to go ahead and solder on a new servo lead. I just go, went ahead and picked one out of my park, parts box right there. Um, and we'll be good to go in that sense. Um, and then also we have to go ahead and work on the prop. You can see this one right here, um, which is a clockwise prop. It's a little torn up. I also noticed it was installed backwards. So that might have been the reason that some of these crashes has occurred. Um, however, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall uh, a new prop on there. This was included with it, so that's very, very convenient. Um, then we'll have this as a last resort, just as a backup in case this one ever breaks. But I'm assuming that you know, with good flying, this one should last a little bit. Anyway, in terms of other electronics, the ESC right here is going to get an XT60 on it, as well as I'm going to go ahead and dress up this little um, custom um, like FPV lead. Um, it looks like BS Projects Inc. went ahead and put that on there and covered it with duct tape. I think if I use some heat shrink tubing, it'll look a little nicer. Um, and yeah, hopefully that will be a good result in the end of that as well. Um, and then we can go ahead and mount some FPV gear. I'm going to go ahead and run off the regulated uh, receiver power um, just with this little adapter cable right here um, to a 25 milliwatt micro transmitter for now. Then we can go ahead and upgrade a little bit later if we need to. But yeah, another nice thing is that this did include a lithium ion battery. Um, it is a 3200 milliamp hour uh, two cell. So it's really nice, but I'm going to add an XT60 on there as well, just for my charging convenience. Uh, so yeah, there we go. That's pretty much all we're going to have to do here. I'm also adding, obviously, a receiver. This one's just your standard Spectrum AR6210. Should be a nice uh, receiver, especially for FPV, nice genuine Spectrum model. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and just get right to this build. I'm going to head up to the time lapse, and I'll keep you guys updated as things go along. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention is I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down with a wet paper towel. There are a few little you know, dirty spots that I can go ahead and probably get off if I just give it a little bit of attention with this as well. So yeah, after all that's done, I'll come back here and wrap it up. Alright guys, so I just finished the repairs for the Strix Nano Goblin, and it obviously isn't cosmetically perfect, uh, but it is structurally strong and obviously fully functional. Um, we've got our control surface testing going on right here first, we've got our elevons um, working properly, as well as our motor. This is just a little itty bitty 3 inch prop 1306 motor setup um, on here, however that's super efficient, especially for um, this system running the 2 cell uh, lithium ion pack from uh, that's 3200 milliamp hours. This thing is huge um, in here, but it's nice and small and it should give me upwards of 45 mil minutes flight time, which is pretty ridiculous. So I'm not expecting a lot of static thrust out of this thing in flight, however I think it's going to be a lot of fun, especially just cruising around FPV at the park. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited for that, stay tuned for the next video where we take this out for a flight. 
Other than that, the only main deviance to my initial plan was that I added duct tape on the bottom hinges uh, right here instead of packing tape or hot glue or anything like that. I think that's just going to hold it on a little bit better. Uh, duct tape tends to stick to the styrofoam EPP stuff uh, a little bit better than the packing tape does. The packing tape it works a lot better for foam board though, um, if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but yeah, this stuff, duct tape is the move as well as it does provide a nice uh, orientation black side over here. And then we have the orange uh, decals on this side to give me proper orientation as I'm flying. Uh, these decals are kind of coming off. So after my first flight, um, if they kind of, you know, rip off of there, then I might have to go ahead and just do my traditional black uh, striping on the leading edge. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I think we'll be fine in the long run. Um, let's go ahead and open this cavity up for my electronics. Again, uh, the 3200 milliamp hour lithium ion pack. Um, as well as the uh, ESC in here. I went ahead and soldered on the JST connector um, and it was originally duct taped on, uh, which was pretty bad. I mean, uh, it probably got the job done for the previous owner. However, uh, obviously it can come apart pretty easily. And if you're running FPV and you suddenly lose your signal, that is not good. Um, so I went ahead and soldered it, heat shrinked it, and we are good to go. Uh, speaking of FPV, I do have a uh, little micro cam up front here. For the time being, um, of course, I'm gonna put a board cam as well as use that uh, JST out for the ESC. See um, in there, but this thing is designed to run off a one cell battery. Um, unfortunately, it's being put through uh, five volts, which it can handle. However, it's really warm and it's actually melting the hot glue that I mounted it down with. Uh, so I'm going to have to find an alternate an alternate way to go ahead and mount that in there that doesn't uh, require something that can fall apart when it gets warm. Other than that, again, AR6210 mounted in there. We went ahead and soldered up that servo line um, and we are good to go. Just go ahead and pop the hatch on. I really like the magnetic hatches. Of course, no tape required. Um, so I'm really happy with that overall. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Last thing I want to do is go ahead and compare this and the Strix or uh, and the ReadyMade RC Recruit. So Nano Goblin Recruit, they're about the same size. Uh, I would say there's about two or three inches uh, smaller wingspan on the Nano Goblin. Obviously, uh, the ReadyMade RC Mini Recruit has stabilization. So if you're a beginner, I definitely recommend this at the moment right now. Um, it is a little bit of a faster plane with a larger motor, larger prop, uh, but this one obviously is going to fly for like what, I don't know, like five times as long as the recruit will. So I'm really happy um, with that. Overall, I'm really excited to get this thing up in the air. So I'm going to I'm gonna quit the yapping and I'm just going to go ahead and take this thing out for a flight. That's happening in the next video though. Uh, so stay tuned for the maiden flight coming soon. With that said, thanks guys for watching and all your support. We're nearing 400 subscribers and it really mean a lot if you'd hit that subscribe button, uh, like and comment on this video if you have any questions or ideas what I can do with this here in the future. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.